Hi there. Um, there have been some fantastic uh, tag videos that have been uh, put out over the past month. And it got me thinking, like, how would AI or ChatGPT answer some of these questions? So I thought it'd be quite fun uh, to start typing in some similar questions and see what ChatGPT says. I thought maybe it would be fun to do a video about it. So this video is about soul. And I've put out um, another video, ChatGPT's responses to uh, questions for Pop and Rock. I must say, um, chat gpt before it answers every question it will say to you it is possible to have errors and in this particular area uh, it's all very subjective and it's a matter of opinion so it's a bit of a disclaimer as well on them saying you know this is not fact but this is what we think are the top singers or top bands and so forth so here we go uh, so the first question i put out are who are the best male soul singers in the 1960s and it came out with this list sam cook uh, otis redding Ray Charles, James Brown, Wilson Pickett, Al Green, Marvin Gaye, and Aretha Franklin. So that threw me off. This is ChatGPT. Yes, she's female, but her influence on soul is monumental. Known as the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin's powerful and soul-stirring performances in the 1960s, including songs like Respect and Chain of Fools, had a significant impact on the genre. I thought that was quite interesting that they, they went a bit further and added a female singer onto that list. I asked who are the top three female soul singers in the 1960s and it came out with this. Aretha Franklin, Etta James, and Diana Ross. As part of the Supremes, the Supremes with lead singer Diana Ross achieved tremendous success in the 1960s. Hits like Baby Love, Stop in the Name of Love, and You Can't Hurry Love propelled them to be the forefront of the Motown sound and solidify Diana Ross as a prominent soul singer. So I thought that was interesting how AI actually goes a bit further and explains why it's actually mentioned a particular artist. So I thought that was uh, pretty cool. I also asked it, who are the top male soul singers in the 1970s? And uh, it came out with this list. So it's uh, Stevie Wonder, Al Green, Marvin Gaye, Curtis Mayfield, Teddy Pendergrass, and Isaac Hayes. So no surprises there really. So my next question was, uh, who are the top female soul singers in the 1970s? And it came out with this list. Aretha Franklin, Chaka Khan, Gladys Knight, as part of the Gladys Knight and the Pips, Roberta Flack, uh, Patti LaBelle, and then Minnie Ripperton, Tina Turner. I think it's fantastic that Minnie Ripperton's in there. It also explains Minnie Ripperton is known for her five octave vocal range. Minnie Ripperton rose to prominence in the 1970s with the hit song Loving You. So the next question is who are the uh, top three soul groups of the 1960s? So it came out with The Temptations, The Supremes, and The Four Tops. So who are the top soul groups in the 1970s? AI came out with this. It was the Earth, Wind and Fire, OJs, the Isley Brothers, and then it goes on to say some honorable mentions, which I, I thought was quite good. And, and it says the Spinners, the Stylistics, and the Commodores. So I asked this question, uh, who are the top funk bands in the 1970s? And it came out with that Parliament, Funkadelic, Pifa, and then Earth, Wind & Fire. And then here, I never heard of this band, The Meters. So it's a hailing from New Orleans. The Meters were instrumental in shaping the sound of funk. Known for their tight rhythmic grooves, they became highly influential. Tracks like Sissy Strut, Look Up Pee Pee, and Fire on the Bayou exemplify their contribution to funk music. So I learned something there. I had never heard of this group, and I did some further research. So I'm really excited about you know uh, listening to their music, and so that's fantastic. And you realize that AI does have educational kind of value to it. So the next question I asked was, what are the top soul albums in the 1970s? And then they came up with Stevie Wonder's Songs in the Key of Life, 1976 album, then Marvin Gaye's What's Going On in 1971, and then Curtis Mayfield's Superfly in 1972, and then Aretha Franklin's Young, Gifted, and Black in 1972, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire's That's the Way of the World, 1975, 
uh, Al Green's Call Me album that came out in 1973. And then Sly and the Family Stones, There's a Riot Going On, and that came out in 1971. There are no surprises there, I, I think, and um, but it's just great to see what it comes up with. So the next question is, who is the most underrated male soul singer in the 1960s? It says William Bell. It says William Bell was a soul singer and songwriter who made significant contributions to the Stax Records label. He's best known for his classic song, You Don't Miss Your Water. While not as widely recognized as some of his contemporaries, Bell's soulful voice and his ability to convey emotion through his music have earned him respect among those familiar with his work. I thought that was really cool because I um, had never heard of William Bell. So, you know, that's prompted me to uh, kind of dig deeper uh, into this artist. Uh, many of you may have heard of him or, or are familiar with him already. For me, it was quite a, a nice discovery. So I also asked like who was the most underrated female soul singer in the 1960s and it came out with this name, uh, Betty Lavette. So I had never heard of her and it says here, Betty Lavette is a soul singer who despite having a career that spans several decades, didn't achieve widespread recognition until later in her life. Her powerful and emotive voice has been praised by critics and her performances are marked by raw authenticity. So what happened was, unbeknownst to me, I accidentally typed in the same question again. And this was really interesting because then it threw up another name. It came up with Maxine Brown, which I have heard of. And ChatGPT says, Maxine Brown was an American soul R&B singer who had a string of hits in the 1960s. She's known for her smooth and soulful vocals. Some of her notable songs include All In My Mind, No, Not My Baby, and Funny. So despite her talent and the quality of her recordings, Maxine Brown did not achieve the same level of mainstream recognition as some of her contemporaries. However, she has gained appreciation among soul music enthusiasts over the years. Who is the most underrated male soul singer in the 1970s? And it comes up with Bobby Womack. That was a huge surprise for me because I've never considered Bobby Womack as an underrated soul singer. So for ChatGPT to throw out his name, I'm just wondering whether or not ChatGPT or AI depends on record sales, on maybe how many times artists are mentioned in publications and maybe he's the least mentioned, you know, in the context of uh, soul music, the soul music record industry. I don't know. So there are different metrics and you just wonder what they're using to, you know, to come up with uh, their picks. Uh, who is the most underrated female soul singer of the 1970s? And it came out with Candy Statton. And I couldn't agree more. Candy Statton is the business. You know, okay, she's got that hit, uh, Young Hearts Run Free, but she's got many other fantastic songs. And I don't actually have many of her LPs, but I do listen to her music online. I stream it. I think they are so on point this one, you know, AI naming Candy Staten as an underrated soul singer in the 70s. So I think that's pretty bang on. What is the best soul song in the 1960s? I mean, if you asked me, I couldn't even answer that question. It's a bit like uh, the soul tag when they're asking you, what's your favorite soul song? I, I really can't answer that because, you know, my soul playlist, I have about 400 soul songs on my playlist. So here with uh, ChatGPT, it says Aretha Franklin's Respect. Uh, which came out in 1967. It says, originally written and recorded by Otis Redding, Aretha Franklin's rendition of Respect became an anthem of the civil rights and feminist movements. Franklin's powerful and soulful delivery, along with her rearrangement of the song, transformed it into a symbol of empowerment and equality. The iconic R-E-S-P-E-C-T spelling and Franklin's dynamic performance make this song stand out as a pinnacle of 1960s soul music. But then it does go on to say there are other notable contenders for the title of the best soul song from the 1960s. And I thought this was quite impressive and it, it explains uh, these might include classics like Sam Cooke's A Change Is Gonna Come and then Otis Redding's Try A Little Tenderness and Marvin Gaye's I Heard It Through The Grapevine. Ultimately, the best soul song is a matter of personal preference and there are numerous outstanding soul tracks from this era. So that's pretty spot on. So I also asked uh, what is the best soul song for the 1970s and it came out actually with a list of four and the first one Stevie Wonder's Superstition that came out in 1972 
and then Curtis Mayfield's Moving On Up, 1970, and then Aretha Franklin's Until You Come Back To Me, which came out in 1973, and then Earth, Wind and Fire's September song that came out in 1978. Hey, personally, I am not, I've never been that keen on that Earth, Wind and Fire song, September, for some reason, so I was actually quite surprised uh, to see AI cited as, well, you know, in the company of Stevie Wonder's song and Curtis Mayfield's Moving On Up, super, and then Stevie Wonder's Superstition, and the Aretha Franklin's uh, Until You Come Back To Me song. So, uh, you know, again, that just shows it's all a preference, right? So there may be some uh, big fans of uh, that September song who uh, would beg to differ. Uh, that's just the beauty of uh, listening and enjoying music because we all have our preferences. So the next question I asked uh, was, what is the best soul album in the 1960s? And then that AI came out with Aretha Franklin's I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You, which came out in 1967. AI goes on to explain uh, why it believes that's the case. So uh, that's the one it names as the best soul album, which actually surprised me. But it does list other contenders. So it lists uh, Otis Redding. Uh, Otis Blue, Otis Redding Sings Soul, 1965 release, and then Sam Cooke's Ain't That Good News, which came out in 1964, and then Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, uh, which came out in 1971. And then it just goes to say, although this is released in the 70s, Marvin Gaye's What's Going On is often associated with the late 1960s due to its social and political themes. It's considered a classic in soul music. I thought that was quite amazing that it went on further to explain why it included Marvin Gaye's early 70s album into the 1960s period. So I thought that was quite clever. Um, and then I asked, oh, what is the best soul album in the 1970s? And it came out with this list, uh, Stevie Wonder's Songs in the Key of Life, uh, it came out in 1976. And then it says there are other notable soul albums from the 1970s. It lists them as Curtis Mayfield's Superfly, came out in 1972. Earth, Wind and Fire's That's the Way of the World, 1975. Al Green's Let's Stay Together, that came out in 1972. So I also asked it, uh, what are the best soul concept albums of all time? And it came out with, uh, no surprise here, Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. Uh, that's a fantastic album, isn't it? And then Isaac Hayes' Hot Buttered Soul that came out in 1969. And I was quite impressed, it says, uh, although not a concept album in the narrative sense, Hot Buttered Soul is known for its extended and reimagined arrangements of classic songs, such as the 18 minute version of By the Time I Get to Phoenix. Uh, that's, that's a really killer uh, cover, by the way. Um, the album is often credited with influencing the development of psychedelic soul. So I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. So the other uh, concept albums it uh, cited was also Superfly, 1972, and that was like a soundtrack, but it says here, the soundtrack album for the film Superfly serves as a thematic companion to the movie exploring the challenges and dangers of urban life, and particularly within the context of the drug trade. It reflects the social issues of the time. So I, th I really uh, appreciated that uh, further explanation there, why it included uh, Superfly in, in its answer. And then Stevie Wonder's Inner Visions album came out in 1973. Inner Visions is not a strict concept album, but it is thematically cohesive, addressing social and political issues alongside personal reflections. The album songs are interconnected through their exploration of inner and outer realities. And uh, anyone who has that album, it's incredible, isn't it? Like every track on that album is fantastic. And you know, every song kind of melts into the next one. And I just couldn't agree more ChatGPT's description or ex explanation as to why it included that album as a concept album. So the last question I asked it was, uh, what artists deserve a box set? And it came out with these names, Aretha Franklin, Sam Cooke, Otis Redding, Stevie Wonder, Al Green and Ray Charles. So uh, that's not a surprise, is it? These are the, the big heavy hitters in soul music. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, do check out my other videos that I did on AI's picks on uh, rock and pop. So uh, thanks for joining me.